Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm fantastic, Nathan. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I was actually a little bit, I was, I was, I'm going through like a midlife crisis, I think, before we jumped on the call. It's getting cold out. It's October as we record. It's, we're living in Colorado, and I'm like, I really need to go for a walk today. But man, it's cold out, and so I was kind of bummed out, but then I've been talking with you and now my spirits are lifted. So I'm glad to be on the podcast with you. That's awesome. You know, the other route you could go is a new girlfriend and a convertible red Corvette. Just saying. I'll go get some hair plugs. (laughs) There you go. Nice. Uh, I don't think that's the way. Well, maybe a new girlfriend, but I don't think I'm going to buy a Corvette and hair plugs. (laughs) Um, So uh, totally not what this podcast is all about. (laughs) Welcome to um, how to find a gold digger with Landon Porter. <laughs> uh, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about messaging today and more specifically the difference between when they reach out to you versus when you reach out to them, right? Cold reaching out or, or having somebody show up and knock on your door and ask you about your thing. Oh, this is perfect because over the last, um, I don't know, three or four weeks, I've been getting five, six, seven people a week, sometimes two or three people a day hitting me up and being like, hey, I saw your post about this and I want to talk to you about this. Or, hey, I've been following you for a while and I see that you do this and I want to talk to you about this. And not everybody that reaches out to me is qualified and I'm having trouble. Uh, there's, There's pros and cons to reaching out to people versus having people reach out to you. So if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of pick your brain about some of these issues that I'm personally going through, because I know that if other people are going through the leads lab stuff and other people are going through the things that you teach in, um, in the, uh, gorilla army nation group, I know that they're probably dealing with some of these same issues. Yep. Pardon me. I'm eating a pineapple high chew. (laughs) <laughs> that's a, that's very unprofessional, but that's okay. It's my podcast. I can do what I want. <laughs> so um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was, I was just going to say, um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I have been getting a lot more leads. Not all of them are qualified. It's a lot easier than going out and, and hunting down leads, but I'm finding that, uh, there's pluses and minuses to both approaches. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're at the point where now you need a, pre-qualifying process before you end up on the strategy call with them, which interestingly enough, that's what we're going over in Influence Architects, which you're a part of. So you're at the point where people are reaching out to you and you're hopping on calls. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to because so-and-so wants to talk to you about your thing. And so you end up on a strategy call and you're like, fuck, this is not quite the right fit or they take all your time and then they're not ready. And you're like, man, I'm, I'm taking all these sales calls, but like, what the hell? It's because we're going right from them reaching out to scheduling a call instead of asking them three or four questions before we agree to it. We need to pre-qualify them so that when we actually get on the call, they're qualified enough to where if we decide to work with them, we can just say, yep, it's a fit. Do you want it? Here's how you get it. Instead, you're taking phone calls or, or Zoom calls with people that want the thing, but then you're finding out on that call, like they're not even running paid traffic. They don't even have their offer dialed in. They don't know who their market is. Like, why am I on this call? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I feel like you tricked me because I, I, I came to you. I was like, Landon, I need more leads. And you're like, yeah, here's how you get more leads. And now I'm like, oh shit, maybe what I maybe what I needed wasn't really more leads. Maybe there's something else going on here. Mm -hmm. So the situation that you're in, and this will be awesome because most of the people that listen to our podcast listen on a regular basis. So they've heard us talk a lot about this. So here's, here's the dealio. This is kind of how it works. Somebody says, I need to make more sales or I need more clients or whatever. Their first thought is, is well, obviously I need more leads. 
And what we do in our world and, and specifically what Leads Lab does is it helps them not just go get more leads, but go get more leads that are much more likely to be the right fit. Awesome. And that's our first date, right? You want more leads? Awesome. But instead of just helping you get more leads, I want to help you get more highly qualified and highly targeted leads, even though some of them aren't going to be the right fit yet. Don't forget, you want to eat today. So you need that client today. But guess what? You're going to want to eat next week too. And you're going to want to eat the week after that and the month after that. There's a process to get these leads coming and coming and coming and coming so you can actually hone your market message a little bit so you can, yes, now they're reaching out to you and they want to talk to you about your thing, but now you go into the marketplace and say, hey, guess what? I know a bunch of you are following me and I've had some conversations lately. You want the thing that I do. That's awesome. But hold your horses a second. Before you reach out to me, these are the things that you need to have in place before it makes sense for us to talk. And now you can go from 10 or 15 reach outs a week to four or five, but those four or five have all those qualifications. And so you can ask them those simple questions. And guess what? You can go, yeah, Bob, like I can do this for you, but we're not going to be a fit because you said that thing. Or yeah, Bob, that makes sense, but I'm actually going to be in the islands between November and, and February. So I'm not even going to be in town. Does it have to be then? Yeah, cool, cool. You're going to have to go find somebody else. You, Nathan, are in the situation where now a bunch of people are reaching out to you because you've been doing what it is that we teach. Awesome. Fantastic. Now you need to adjust your market message a little bit. The people that have been following will continue to follow, but instead of reaching out now, they'll reach out in 60 days when they've got those other two pieces in place. And you're still building a pipeline of people that get it. They dig you. They're, they want the thing that you do. Now we just help them make sure that they're actually ready for it. And at the same time, you're in, this, in the position where you need to have three to four questions that you ask them when they reach out. Awesome. So what are you doing about this? Cool. So once that happens, how's this work? Fantastic. How many times have you done that? Right? Whatever those three or four questions are that make sure that they're qualified for you to take your time and get on a phone call with them, you can do that in Messenger. But yeah, that's what we do, right? So I kind of want to go back to that, but I first want to touch on something and get your take on it. Going out and hunting down leads versus people that come to you, um, I feel like if I'm hunting down leads, they should be more qualified. I should be able to better qualify people before I, before I reach out to them. But there's a lot of times where the things that I need to know in order to qualify, I can't really know just by searching them out on a Facebook group or following some of their posts. In my particular case, I can't know how much they're spending on paid traffic without first reaching out to them. I can't know what their um, current you know, cost per acquisition is without reaching out to them. Cause it's a lot of the things that I need to know to qualify people aren't something that they put on Facebook or aren't something that they put on their public uh, LinkedIn profile. So um, when it comes to qualifying, I guess when they reach out to you or when you reach out to them, how does qualifying work differently in those two different scenarios? It's actually the same thing. And the, the piece of it that I think you might be missing is the amount of time and effort that goes into getting that person in a place where they're willing to give you that information. When you're talking about hunting and going and like identifying people, there are other implications you can use. And this is, I'm not speaking specifically to you. I'm speaking to everybody. There are other implications that will allude to they either are qualified or are not qualified. Right. But you've got to do a little bit of that research and you've then got to validate that. You've got to clarify that with them. You've got to confirm that that's accurate. Your assumption is accurate. Therefore, it makes sense to get on a call. The problem with that is the time and effort that it goes, that it takes to get somebody that you've put that research and the behind the scenes looking into, into place, getting them on a call you're having to sell them that it makes sense for them to take the time to get on a call with you. Cool. That's fucking cold calling. Like 
the reason that I do everything that I do is to avoid that. If you put the same time and effort into getting clients the way that I do it, now you get people reaching out. You can continue and continue and continue to hone that process to where the people that are reaching out, they dig it, they dig you, they're qualified, they're ready to go, right? They want a virtual handshake on a Zoom call before they click the buy here button. Those are all assets that continue and continue and continue to work for you. Building relationships with people in the marketplace that are ready now, that'll be ready tomorrow, that'll be ready in three months. Those assets are just there and they're there forever. When you identify somebody in the marketplace and you go research them and you call them or you send them an email or you hit them on social media, once they say no, regardless of where at in that conversation it is, that asset's gone. Same time, same effort. One continues to give, right? And the other one doesn't. It's the, it's the difference between growing an apple tree and going to the store and buying an apple. If you grow an apple tree, you've got apples coming out of that apple tree long after you planted it and watered it, right? Once you go to the store and get an apple, that's the only apple you got, right? That's the difference. Can it be done? Sure, absolutely. I made a career of it for 15 years. Does it suck? Usually. So I feel like we've done a lot of, on this, on this podcast and inside of uh, the Facebook group, I think we've done a lot of, okay, you're at the point now where you feel like this person is qualified. How do you, re- how do you reach out to them and say, hey, does it make sense to have a conversation about this? I want to talk about the opposite though. You got to the point where somebody either reached out to you or you reached out to them and you've been having a couple back and forths and you're starting to realize or you have realized it's dawned on you. This person is not qualified. Do you just ghost them? No. Or, okay. Okay. So, no. um, cause I keep running into this a lot. Uh, 10 people have hit me up. Three of them are qualified. The other seven are not qualified. What do I do with the people that are not qualified? Tell them. Tell them you're not good enough for me. It's letting them down easy. Think, think, think about it when you were dating, right? You ended up dating somebody and after the second or third or 15th or 287th date, you were like, eh, I don't know if this is something I want to keep doing. Well, there's two ways to do it. There's the really shitty way, just ghost them, right? Which causes bad will from them and they will probably talk about it with somebody at some point in time or fall on your sword, claim ownership of why this isn't going to work and come up with a reason why it's your fault and not theirs and make them feel good about themselves in the process. This is how to let somebody down easy, right? If you're dating somebody, you you met them at Starbucks and you decided to go out to lunch in a couple of days and you went to lunch and you're like, yeah, I don't think so. And they call that next day and they go, that was really awesome. Like, you want to go to dinner? Right? It's the same thing. You know, I would love to, but I think I'm going to pass. It occurred to me that when we were at lunch the other day that I'm totally not good enough for you. You deserve somebody way better than me because I'm really not looking to like settle down and have a just a one-on-one relationship. I'm looking to sleep with half the planet and I don't think you deserve that. Right? I, I put on my best face the other day and, and lunch was amazing and you're really interesting and I'm an alcoholic and I'm just going to like fuck up your world and burn your house down and cause problems with you and your kids and you probably deserve better than that. Like these are all like way hyper blatant examples. But how do, you, how do you help somebody go, oh, yeah, you're right. I'd love, to, I'd love to be able to do your sales page for you. However, most of the people that I'm really getting good results for are in this space. And to be honest, like after we talked, I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought, about, I don't know shit about your marketplace. And like, I'd be a liar if I said it was interesting and it's not. And as a copywriter, I need to be interested in the subject matter and like, yeah, I can take your money and I can write you a sales page and it'll look really pretty. But my concern is that it won't convert the way that you really deserve. And 
at this point in time, I'd prefer if you didn't hire me to do it. I know this person and this person, I'd be happy to connect you. They kind of play in that space, right? It's all me. It's all my fault. You're amazing. You're awesome. And if they're not, like, I'm not going to like sugarcoat that. I'm not going to lie to them. If they're a shithead, I'm going to say, yeah, I don't think so. Well, why is that? Because you're like not ready for this. But understand that when you do that, you're probably going to rub somebody the wrong way and they're probably going to talk to other people in your marketplace about it. So I really like the example that you gave because I actually just went through this a couple of times last week, which was where I just had to say, yeah, um, I like what you're doing. I, I love the product. I love the idea. The only problem is for what I cost, you're not at the point where you're going to actually be able to le- leverage that and justify um, in order to get the best out of what I can do to get the most out of what I can do. You need to have this, this, and this in place. And if you don't have those in place, I feel like I'm just going to be taking your money from you and not being able to give you the best results. So I really like that approach. Um, I kind of intuitively did it without talking to you first, but I think that probably because we've had so many conversations, maybe, maybe you've subconsciously indoctrinated me. I'm not exactly sure. We, we actually talked about an aspect of this on one or both of the ICA podcasts. And I think because you saw that, um, tell the market who you're for and tell the market who you're not for. Right. I think some of that, um, some of that mentality helped you formulate telling this person or these people, I'm not the right fit for you. It's all principles, dude. There's like three of them, right? Once you understand the three of them and, and use them a couple of times, pretty soon you're like implementing them in all the different aspects of client acquisition. And like, literally that's the deal. Nice. All right, Landon, we've kind of covered a lot this week. Um, but I think that it's a valuable thing because people that come into your world quickly run into this problem where before they meet you, they're like, I need some clients. And then after they meet you, they're like, Oh crap, I need a way to weed through all of this, this flooding in my inbox so that I'm not wasting time with bad leads. Um, for people that want to know a little bit more for people that want to go a little bit deeper into your world, where is the best place to connect with you or to, to find out more about what you're doing? Two places. If, if you're new to the podcast and you haven't heard this before, check out sales, The second place is our Facebook group, our main Facebook group, gorilla army nation, getting clients without being salesy and look into leads lab. Awesome. Landon, I appreciate it, man. And until next time, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scout. Don't forget, I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I can't stand, and you probably feel the same way. Peace out, Cub Scouts.